Happy New Year. I hope you're doing well today. It's a beautiful day here in sunny Florida. But as I was thinking about 2017 and I realized that the list of things that we all have to do from those who have encouraged us how to have the best year is consistently growing and I I don't want to add to that but I do want to share a few thoughts on how to create a good year. How to make sure 2017 is moving in the right direction. Now direction is so important because Let's say I wanted to go to Chicago, but I started traveling south. If I was traveling south from Florida, I would never make it to Chicago. If my expectation was Chicago, but I was traveling south, I would be greatly disappointed when I began to assess my progress in a few hours, knowing that I'm actually further away from Chicago than when I started. So direction is important, and that's what I want to share with you today is Uh, Five ways that I kind of put into practice myself each year to make sure I'm heading in the right direction. You know, when you expect a certain outcome or a certain result, like in 2017, maybe you have some goals or resolutions or whatever they are, you expect to see certain things. But if you're not going in the direction of that expectation, you're ultimately going to come to a point where you're disappointed with the results that you see. You know, our results have so much to do with us pointing ourselves in the right direction of life. And so hopefully these five things, they're not extensive, they're not necessarily profound, but hopefully they'll be things that will equip you to have a good year, or at least to point your year in the right direction. The first thing that I wanted to share with you is start your year by fearing God. Now, the Bible clearly says that this is a choice that we can make, that we can choose the fear of the Lord. Now, fearing God is a very difficult concept to define. Maybe at the surface level, we can define it as revering God and reverencing God. But there's more to it as you look throughout the scriptures. At the beginning of wisdom is the fear of God so that you can even walk in divine wisdom without beginning with fearing God. So the way that I wanted to define it for you today, the way that I kind of um, craft it for myself as I look through the scriptures is fearing God is to honor who God is and to value what he has spoken. To honor who he is, that he is God, there is none like him. That he is a God that does not lie, that his character is proven, that he is good all the way through, that he is righteous. So I honor who he is, that he is God inside my life. He is the Lord over my life. But I also value what he has spoken in his words. So it's, you can't just say, oh yeah, I believe in God and I honor God, but I don't value what he says. No, that the what he has spoken in his words should take precedence, that what he has said should be the highest value inside of our lives. So start the year by fearing God, by putting yourself in your rightful place, putting God in his rightful place by honoring him, and then to value highly what he has spoken. If you find it in the word, make sure you apply it to your life, that you, 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 you allow your life to be transformed by the word of God. So honor who he is, and value the things that he has spoken. The second thing to make sure your life is consistently going or the year is consistently going in the right direction is to relentlessly ask the right questions. Within all of us, we have both a critic and we have a coach. The critic is asking the wrong questions. Oh, why are you so stupid? Why did you make that mistake? Uh, oh, why, why won't you ever just get your act together? It says, those questions that demoralize us, but there's also a coach that if you can identify within yourself, ask the right questions, something like this. Why did I get up today? Where do I need to grow? Where am I doing well? Who can I bless today? Who can I show my gratitude today? Where, where can I begin to add value inside of my own personal life? When you start asking the right questions, it redirects your focus off of your mistakes, It redirects your focus off of the failures maybe that you have or the past that is speaking to you. When you learn to ask the right questions, it puts you in the driver's seat of your life and it also 
causes you to focus on that which is profitable to you rather than criticize. Don't criticize yourself. Don't allow the questions in your mind of saying, how can I be so dumb or, or why will I never, why, why have I yet to, to make it where I want to go or why is it taking me so long or why am I not like that person or I, I'm not able to do what that other person is doing. Make sure you start asking questions that empower you. Questions of saying, what's good about today? What's good about my life? What am I expecting for 2017? So the first thing is fear God. Start by fearing God. Honor who He is and value what He says. The second thing is to relentlessly ask questions. All the time ask yourself the questions. The third thing to kind of point your year in the right direction is make sure you take care of your body. Now I know there's others that I personally know take better care of their body than me, but I do attempt on a consistent basis to take care of this body because I know that this is the vehicle for me to fulfill God's will. I'm not my body. I'm a spirit man who exists within this flesh, exists within this body, and this body is the vehicle for me to fulfill the will of God. So it's important that I do my best to take care of my body. Now, I do not take care of my body at a level that's higher than taking care of my spiritual life, but my body is important. It actually plays a role in me being able to fulfill God's word or God's will in this life. The fourth thing is to memorize scripture or allow scripture to, to be planted in your heart. Scripture is one of the most important things. It, 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 John 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Matthew 4, 4 says, Man cannot live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All Scripture is given by inspiration and is profitable for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness and instruction. So the Word of God is vital to us. And that, that Even Jesus said that as you abide in me and let my words abide in you. So we have a responsibility to put the Word of God inside of our heart. And we can do that through memorization. And that's why I'm excited about Simple Believer because there's a section in Simple Believer, which is mile marker number four, I believe, which is running on God's Word. And I share with you seven little baby steps on how to memorize the Word of God effectively. And the last thing I wanted to share to make sure your life is going in the right direction is to live with eternity on your mind. We are only on this earth for a short time, just a short amount of time compared to the time that we're going to spend in eternity. And it's how you live your life today that will determine your experience in eternity. We are not living for salvation, but we are living for rewards that God said we can store up for ourselves when we stand before Him. That the works that we do on this earth will be thrown into a fire and they will either come out as something that God can deem valuable or they'll be burned up and there will be no reward. So live knowing that what you do in these short 70, 80, 90, or 100 years that you're going to live on this earth will determine what you experience and receive when you stand before God, your Creator. There's two things to think of as you live with eternity on your mind. The first thing is, am I faithful to what God has asked me to do? And number two, am I doing the things that God has required of me with a great attitude? Faithfulness and attitude are the key things that when we stand before our Maker that He will uh, 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 measure us according to our faithfulness and our attitude. So number one, fear God. Number two, relentlessly ask questions. Number three, take care of this body. It's the vehicle to fulfill the will of God. Number four, memorize this scripture. Put scripture inside your heart. Put scripture inside your mind. Keep the scripture on your lips as you speak it each and every day. And number five, live with eternity on your mind so that you realize one day, this life you'll have to be accountable for to your maker. Will you bring him a return on his invest investment 
within you. Have a great day. Have a great year. And realize a great year is made up of great months and great months are made up of great weeks and great weeks are made up of great days and great days are made up of great hours and great hours are great made up of great minutes. You have 8,700 hours in 2017. What will you do with them? How will you invest them rightly to make sure you're going in the right direction? Have a great year. I'm excited for you. I'm, I can't wait to uh, launch Simple Believer come February. And uh, I know it's going to be a great journey for all of us. Have a great day. Bye-bye.